Uh, good afternoon, my name is Maher Lewis and uh, today we're going to be talking about land XML. Anyways, we're going to go through a demonstration and, uh, and hopefully this will help a few of you um, who are using land desktop or civil 3D. Okay. So that's the end of uh, my presentation. Now I'm going to get right into a demonstration. So I'm going to use, uh, again, I'm using Autodesk products only because that's what I have uh, easy access to. But I'm going to go ahead and import some land XML data. And in this case, I'm going to import a, uh, a road from uh, MX road. Lots of surfaces and alignments and some profiles, total points. We'll go ahead and bring those in. So we can see that we have a road, number of surfaces. I believe uh, our data also indicated that there was a surface, uh, a profile that was imported. I can very quickly uh, bring that profile into the drawing. And we can even see that the uh, profile information came in as well. So, we, so you can see it's very quick and easy to, uh, to bring in data. And this is a cross end. This is uh, Bentley and Autodesk uh, data interoperability. Or uh, roadway information, uh, surface models, profiles, and so forth. And I can not only bring that data in, but I can I can re-export it and use that same data to to generate a report. So I'll go ahead and, and I'm going to re-export that data that I I just brought into uh, this application, and I'm going to send that data to a, a, an Excel based reporting application. I'm going to go and generate an alignment curve report. So I can see I've got a, uh, very quickly, I've got an engineering report on my road center line with my tangent, spiral, curve data. We also know that there was a profile in there, so I'll go and create a profile station report. And we can see the vertical alignment uh, report is generated very quickly. So. There's a lot of different kinds of reports that can be generated uh, using land XML data. And uh, this isn't the only XLT-based uh, reporting tool that's out there. I, I know uh, Bentley has one uh, as well, uh, one that's uh, actually a very nice one. Uh, but you can see we can uh, do HTML-based reports. We can also use the data to uh, export profile data uh, in a comma-separated comma uh, value file. So not only HTML, but we can also create ASCII files directly from it. We can create uh, uh, spreadsheet files as well, uh, cross sections, uh, point data, uh, parcel reports, many, many different types of, of reports can be generated using land XML data. And it's the same land XML data file. So that kind of covers uh, engineering information. So, what are some of these non uh, non typical or non standard uses for uh, land XML data? Well, how about we'll uh, bring the data file into uh, 3D Studio and take a look at it. So we'll bring in uh, this is a Woodbridge subdivision project from uh, Eagle Point. I'll go ahead and. Uh, we can see number of surfaces, alignments, and parcels, and I'll just bring that right into 3D Studio. We can see the alignments, parcels, and surfaces ready for use. Now I can um, uh, drape these objects down onto the surface. I can colorize the various surfaces in here, add material, swap in um, items, and I can create uh, high-end 3D uh, visualizations very, very quickly uh, by using it. An interesting thing here is that this is a land XML 1.1 file from Eagle Point. I can also, uh, this is 3D Studio Max 7, which was only supports land XML 1.1, and I believe it was uh, fixed some time ago. Uh, I also have a land XML 1.1 sample that has the new 
roadway in it. And what we'll find here is that even though this particular product does not support uh, the new uh, cross-section model, we'll find that it does uh, and is able to bring in the land XML data that it doesn't understand directly. And while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and launch, uh, this is the uh, Autodesk uh, architectural desktop. This is the 2004 version, so this is, a, and again, this is an older file. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in a, a Land XML 1.1 sample into this application. Again, this, this demonstrates the, the backward compatibility of even the newest data files. Go ahead and import all the information here. Now you can see we brought in a surface with contours. We also brought in the parcels and uh, cover points, both center lines. That was a Landix 1.1 file, but I can also uh, create a new drawing and I'll import. Another file will uh, go ahead and, and import the um, split bridge subdivision from Eagle Point into the architectural desktop. And what we see is, is uh, the surface that came in from from the Eagle Point data file uh, with the contours, multiple surfaces. You also see the parcels and the cover points um, and the, uh, the road surface and the uh, retention pond directly in the, into the architectural desktop. We'll hey, back into uh, 3D Studio and go ahead and bring in the this new uh, Land XML 1.1 file. I'll get rid of the existing surface so we can bring in the roadway and, and the alignment uh, directly. So here you can see an older application importing the, the uh, very newest, um, latest version of the Land XML data. And I can also bring in the Eagle Point uh, Woodbridge subdivision, again, with the, the same retention pond and, and parcel that we see in our central desktop. Hey, Nathan? Yes. Um, so one of the things that I think is asked by a few different folks is just on unit conversion. So the, the thing, and correct me if I'm missing this, but, you know, because in the Land XML file you've identified or, or established what the units are, uh, it's then up to an application like Architectural Desktop to say, Hey, we're going to input this in as part of our utility. We're going to convert this into whatever units are being used in architectural desktop. Right. So again, that it, you know, because the because the intelligence is in, is in the Linux XML uh, file itself, then the applications can determine however they whatever units they want to use. Um, right. Uh, it's basically uh, this this particular example is a uh, is a is a metric sample going into an uh, inches, mm -hmm. yep. uh, for example. And, and just so everyone knows as well, that's one of the things that we found with Land XML early was that it's a good way to take your land desktop, civil 3D, or engineering project data if you want to go from imperial or metric units into the opposite. So if I'm in imperial and I want to, if I need to make it all metric, I can send out to Land XML and bring it back in in a different drawing. Uh, yeah, very, very easy.